So, so with, starting from there, let's just uh, look at go back to look at the general notion about the electrochemistry. So we actually said something. We can always representing a, a reaction of some OX means oxidative species. They can take up an electron and become a reduced form. So this is a generic uh, expression of this. And sometimes they come with a pair. For every uh, ox oxidative species, pick up electron, there's another pair that give out electron. So for simplicity, we can just write there the pair happen to be the same uh, stoichiometry. So let's just say, but to differentiate them, we can say another reaction at the same time uh, lose the electron, become oxidated form. So this is the sort of a, a generic uh, 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 expression. And you could, some, most of the time, you don't even know that it was a uh, electrochemistry happening. So you simply just, uh, because I can combine these two reactions, make it as oxidative species that react with they are the reduc more reductive species. You can call these uh, antioxidant, if you wish. This is the kind of thing you're talking about. And then they can, this one will become it. You can call this conjugated reduced form, or is this uh, reduced one will be oxidized. So this, this is the reaction you see more often in just in the chemical setting. So in fact, uh, a lot of redox reactions occur without even being connected to the battery. Now today what we want to do is we want to actually achieve not just trying to make a battery. Uh, I, I want to emphasize, uh, because up to this point I was trying to say, hey, uh, <coughs> we, were, um, uh, we were trying to understand battery, so we can use electrochemistry. But the other purpose of this discussion is we want to find a quantitative way to evaluate uh, different chemicals' ability to either fight to get the electron or give up the electron. So we have similar concept for acids, right? We know uh, what is called a strong base or strong acid, and that's the pKa. Here, how do we, how do we, so if you look at this reaction, because in fact, in the biological system, you have a lot of redox reaction. You, you won't have a way to put a quantitative scale for every compound, you know, like when people say a very popular antioxidant, what do you really mean? How much do they have a lot of electron, or do they have higher tendency to give up electron? So there is a need to characterize uh, different chemicals' ability to hold on or give up electron. So there is basically a dual purpose uh, for today's discussion. That is, uh, we want to find a quantitative uh, method to uh, think about this question, like how much this is going to draw. So, <clears throat> so we actually utilize the uh, electrochemical cell battery as a way to do the quantitative scaling instead of using a proton or acid. In that case, we measure the acidity. Although, in that case, you can end up mixed up with electrochemistry later on as we will get to that point. So to do so, let's just kind of uh, set up this reaction so that it will occur in the electrochemical cell, right? So we. We don't just mix them up directly. We separate these two species into different chambers. So where you can make up a, uh, a chem electrochemical cell on one side is you can have a oxidative species paired with the reductive species. So this particular cell, because we can kind of, in the other side is another pair, the second pair. Now, <clears throat> and they are, let's just assume they can be connected so that there will be uh, a redox reaction occurring through a certain of battery. So remember, we have to complete the circuit by some kind of salt bridge. So, and we have to explain what that is. Now, let's assume the first, the top pair wins battle. So what happens is that means this next side, left hand, left hand side, is the oxidative species getting electron become reductive, as I read, uh, wrote on that. 
and this side lose the battle, it gave it up the electron, as I wrote there, uh, become oxygen plus. Try to just make sense. So, where is, where is the flow of the electron in the circuit? Clockwise, anti-clockwise. <laughs> okay, so the electron goes this way. What is the direction of the current? The other way, because in, in the physics, we define the, the current direction as positive. So if you have a negative angle that way, it's equivalent to positive. So the current basically goes the other way. So all good. So it looks like we have some basis to understand uh, physics in this case. Now we're all good. So, but remember, keep in mind what we want to do here. We want to actually, uh, we want to find a way to describe this reaction quantitatively. So, um, now before I go forward, uh, how do we do this, basically? I mean, any, any wild guess what, how we're going to approach this problem? I'm, I'm asking is that I, I have, uh, we have, last time we basically said, hey, electrochemistry, we have, uh, we can make a battery, we know every chemical uh, may have a different intrinsic uh, affinity for electrons, so uh, there must be some quantitative way, quantitative way to describe each chemical's ability to hold on, uh, hold on electrons. So uh, uh, we try to develop a math, math or not, a quantitative approach to, to, to measure uh, the relative affinity of each relaxed pair of electrons. Or that all, every time when you read a label on something, I have a very good antioxidant. And what do you really mean by that? There must be some quantitative way to describe each chemical. Now, so I'm basically make, uh, try to say that we, we have a traditional a chemical reaction way to look at this redox chemistry. And, but then we also have uh, a way to put it in battery. So like, let's just say, now you already know all of the measurements. So uh, I want to know, can we use the measurement of we can make? Now on the battery, what do you really measure? Huh? We buy AAA, what does it say on the battery? <laughs> what is the typical batteries? Volts. Volt. Yeah, okay, so the battery is characterized by the voltage, right? So you have, so you can, you can basically measure the volt, right? So that's a no look. So that's a quantitative thing you can measure. So basically, you have a voltage of any battery. Or for any battery, we can do yeah. We can also make a measure the voltage here, right? I mean, obviously, I can. You can say, hey, you can put a a load so, so much so that there is almost no current go through, but you still can feel the tendency of the current chain so that's, I mean, with, uh, we can measure the voltage, basically, the bottom line. You have a voltmeter, right? Now, so then the next question is, uh, how do we use this voltage to describe this reaction? Like, let me just say, intuitively, if I have a uh, oxidative species paired with a really reductive species, would you say the voltage to be bigger or smaller compared with another case where the oxidative species ability to fight the electron is equal close to this guy's holding the electron? And which one had a higher voltage? The one that the two pair have a very big difference in terms of their fighting the electron. I mean, your intuition might say the one with a large, uh, so that, so we, we pretty much would believe that's the intuition. But then the question is, how do we get a quantitative on our intuition? So there has to be, that means there must be some sort of uh, relationship between uh, the, this particular reaction's tendency. So then I say, okay, great. Now we got an intuition, right? So we know uh, if this guy was really fighting electron very strongly, this why it's really like to give up electron, then I get bigger voltage. You know, let's just say that's our gut feeling. We don't really know. Now, okay, let's just stop with that. That's something you measure by physics, right? But let me ask the question in another way. 
if I have this reaction going on, let's just forget about electroparameter for the moment. Now, if this guy has a very strong tendency to get electron, this one has a very strong tendency to give up electron, what, this, what is this reaction in terms of what we already know? A particular quantity will become more bigger or quantitatively descriptable based on what we already learned. We have learned what about chemical reaction at this point? Got it? So it'll become <coughs> more spontaneous. So okay, so what G is the quantity? Okay, good. We have a delta Z. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, <coughs> I think that's good all the time we spend on discussing it. It's, uh, so it's definitely. Okay, so we have, we usually for reaction, so delta RT becomes very negative. We already learned that. Okay, so there you go. So we have, we have some, we just uh, had some, okay, this, so that means this guy and this guy might be related. Isn't that right? Yeah, so, so it makes sense. It's, I'm trying to force you believe it because we, I'm just pretending I'm guessing like we were thinking about the first time, or like the guy called Leinster, probably he came up with the same idea. That's how, because he's the first one doing it, so he has been credited with the, his name, it's called Leinster equation. So we were, were trying to follow his path, try to guess what he was thinking. I mean, this is something that I can guess, but there's many other scientific breakthroughs in history I could not guess. So, so those are the ones that I've always get me really amazed. But this one is actually quite pleasant if you follow the tra train of thought. So here we go. So we. Now, okay, great. So we have a way, we know a chemical reaction's tendency to occur is associated with the Gibbs energy. Now we already kind of decide, we all agree in this room that, well, I bet you for those who responded that, this could also reflect that this uh, Gibbs energy. But then that means this uh, Gibbs energy somehow is related to voltage. Okay, now this next question would be harder to ask. So how do we make that connection then? Anthony? Uh, I mean, I'm just thinking about like unit, unit wise. So, uh, charge times voltage is like joules, and uh, gives energy is measured in joules. So, somehow, uh, the, to me, like something about that makes sense. Well, I don't know that. No, that's a very good point. So you go by the energy unit. Yeah. So that means that somehow the voltage itself is not. Uh, a right unit to compare, but to convert the voltage into energy is what, in the, based on the physics answer, your point is that there has to be some kind of charge. Usually, uh, in, in physics, charge is the Q, you know, uh, times the voltage uh, is the, the amount of work you get out of it. So, or you, you, you calculate your power times the time, the watts times time is the electric power you use. So this is so this is the energy, and of course we also have uh, a delta R G is in energy term. So they all have same unit. So, so we know we have to somehow bring them together. So that means the delta R G somehow in the past we have related energy is the ability to do the work. The first day we talked about it, right? Is it not? So. How is delta RG related to the ability to do the work? Anybody still remember? Okay, for any chemical reaction, the Gibbs energy is corresponding, or for any process, uh, in the, assuming it's carried out in reversible, constant temperature pressure, the Gibbs energy is what? Nick? Yes. So, I know it's too early for me to remind you about the final, the final exam. This is the perfect time question for me to ask. Because it will relate the beginning of the semester and what we're doing now. Okay? So if you really kind of wonder, hmm, how does that happen? Okay, I can have like a quick alert set of G equals to H. Uh, So, um, T, okay, let's just do the D 
e g basically if I go too far away, I would like to have it. So it's uh, the work plus uh, p d way. So uh, if you don't know what that is, then you have to go back to the note. Now, obviously, I even remember, is Melissa, you asked me, like, uh, oh, for most other cases, we don't even care about, we just simply take the word. That is true. You know, when we talk about the other case, we use ideal gas a lot, but in this case, the process, the volume change is almost nothing. So you almost can say this one is the work. So not to actually for me to go back, I don't want to you, uh, this is not part of the derivation, but I, want, I do want you to go back to review the notes. This is, as Nick pointed out, this is basically the work, uh, and exclude uh, expansion. Now, for the electrochemistry, we don't have that. I believe most of the case, the electrode in solution, we can pretty much uh, ignore the expansion work. So all the Gibbs energy you gain from chemical expansion can be used to, uh, to do work. Now, so we're getting somewhere. Okay, so the electrical energy, the amount of work we get is that. The chemical reaction, uh, the uh, Gibbs energy for like particular reaction is also correspond the amount of work you can do. So if the electrical energy is the work you're trying to get out of this reaction, that means the work, the electrical work, the charge uh, times the voltage has to somehow be related to this guy. So this is good, right? So this uh, we will, um, for any chemical reaction, uh, redox reaction, we finally find a way to quantitatively describe. So that means there must be a instrument we can measure the number, the number can give us put it on a particular redox reaction. This is the fundamental. So for this whole discussion, uh, we used one uh, original uh, thermodynamic constant we derived earlier in the semester. So this is uh, the, the basis for Lenz to come up uh, an equation to describe the uh, quantitatively how a redox reaction is not only related to the battery. So this, this equation, like I said, the two points I raised at the very beginning is uh, how can we estimate the voltage for a given uh, redox chemical reaction, so that's one. The reverse is also true. If I want to know a relativity Let's say I have no idea. I just find a particular chemical or another chemical. I want to know how, which one is more or less gave up electron. I just hook up the electron and measure the voltage. And then if I, from there, I can predict uh, who, who is more like oxidizing by how much. So, so you not only can use this to, to predict the voltage of a battery made up of a particular reaction. Inversely, you can use this system to describe all the chemical in the world, uh, if you set a right reference point on about what we call redox potential. So those are the, the these are the significance of the Lenz equation. Okay, so now with this, now we can expand a little bit more. Okay, so with um now then we'll say okay, uh, we we have said one set is the intrinsic. Uh, affinity for, for uh, every chemical to hold on or give up electron. That's one question we, we, we are asking. When we say intrinsic, we really uh, don't have a good way to describe. Usually we mean, uh, it's like when you talk about this particular reaction, in, when everybody is in the so-called standard state. So we actually have something called, uh, if everybody, this is no good. So, uh, so we have, so for standard state, you can say, hey, everybody's in one molar concentration. So that's, that's always uh, something we can uh, call them uh, as a, the Gibbs energy. But you, you can call that intrinsic uh, redox potential. 
for intrinsic ability for different kind of control on R. Uh, when they are all at the standard state, which means one molar concentration for gas P equals one bond, so on and so forth. Now, but when you make a battery, sometimes you don't necessarily have exactly one molar concentration. So you can change the chemical reactions uh, 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 gives energy by concentration, right? So this recall, if you, I mean, I'm not going to ask the, uh, the audience question because this is something we just finished. So you start with uh, any chemical had a, um, this is referred to either the redox box, redox, and for everybody there is a concentration effect of them. So therefore, uh, the Gibbs energy usually is related to the standard state. Uh, unfortunately, we we'll have to use another Q set, but I, I'm, I'm going to award you the Q because this Q here is by, electric, by uh, electrical quantity, but we actually uh, can use simply just, let's just say, uh, the concentration of the product. So, so I, that you can see the reaction. Uh, the reactions Gibbs energy is related to not only the standard Gibbs energy energy change, but also a particular concentration of that reaction. Right. So we, we, we just did this when we talk about the equilibrium constant. So the reactions overall tendency uh, is not only related to the intrinsic uh, ability for each chemical but also the concentration fact. You could actually take away a lot of this or drive a lot of this concentration, you can actually alter the Gibbs energy um, uh, of the reaction. Therefore, you can actually potentially manipulate the voltage of the battery by playing the game of concentration. That if you want a particular battery to match a particular voltage, uh, so that's, that's something you can do. Okay, so we, we, got, we basically used the two old thermodynamic quantitative relationship uh, to get this point. One is we know delta RG is related to the work, non-expansion work. The other one is we know this is related to concentration. Now, the bridging point is that whatever uh, the delta RG can be uh, equivalent with the electrical work. But then that's pretty much uh, all you do. So, but in the, um, in the electrochemistry, Oftentimes, we, uh, if we put a water meat on this, we actually measure, we call it electrical potential cell of the cell. So if everybody is under, under the standard state, means on the same concent uh, concentration as one molar or whatever reference point we choose, and then you would actually have the this, this standard uh, Itself potential. That means you put the voltmeter meter there, you can actually set, if everybody set it in a standard constraint, you can measure a number, that's the number you refer as a standard state cell, electrochemical cell potential. But if you have a random concentration, you will get this. So these are all related to the Gibbs energy of this. So we can pretty much uh, walk through the rest of this just by simply. Uh, so the uh, last time we mentioned something about when you actually walk from biology or chemistry into the physics, uh, the physics, physics usually talk about particle directly. That's what they do. So they, they, when they measure, they just say, hey, there's an uh, uh, electron, and then that's the voltage. That's the per electron amount of energy you get. But majority of the time, we don't talk about one electron. We talk about a more of molecule has been converted. So whenever we write the equation, we all unit by implicitly is how many more of that converting that. So for every more of this convert to that, our electron basically have to time the more amount of this. Because this E means one electron. So basically by intrinsically, when we actually related this, we always end up time the a uh, you know the up gatherer constant. And that's the amount of uh, actual charge. But for physics also by implicitly, every time when you have a electron, it means negative. That's why at the beginning I was asking you, electron going that way, current going that way. So we actually carry the negative charge for electron, just for, for convention issue. So basically, uh, 
for every uh, redox chemical reaction, the amount of charge associated for this reaction is actually the this is the Faraday constant. And but I have a molar that's per mole of electron. So I have a that many more, and because this electron is negative charged, so we always end up carrying a negative sign just so that we can differentiate. Or we follow the convention of the physics. Uh, otherwise, our current will be different from them, so that would be not good. So this this conversion should be straightforward. I mean, in the uh, in the uh, PowerPoint, uh, I actually laid out a, a few points just so that you, you won't get uh, confused here. So basically, to walk from here to physics back over here, so, so the charge corresponding to this reaction basically is first is negative, the electron being moved, and there's uh, that many more of electron. And for every mole of electron, there's a Faraday constant of the amount of uh, charge moved. So then the voltage. And, and then we actually like to, this voltage is usually physics U, but the electrochemist says, OK, well, let, let's call this E0. So you can also say that. Not quite E zero yet. So this is just any e, e cell. Any questions so far? Okay. So E cell is that just a different term for voltage? Yeah, it's just the electrochemists just don't like to call it E. So for some oh, reason, okay. we just decide to call it E. Uh, what did I say? What's the V in some of the Oh, it's not V. It's actually the mu. Actually, I, I don't have a very good way to. That's the stoichiometry. So for this reaction, by implicitly, I already know for this reaction to occur, this amount of, of electron being transferred. So, so, so for, for as written, how much uh, exchange of charge has already come through, come through this reaction? Any other questions? Okay, so so we're good to go. So now we almost finish the thinking process for learn stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just, just one more time. So it's, it's that that kind of is, you're calling it a mu, but yeah, so that's the mole of electron. So because that's the number of moles, the number of well, number of mole of electron that will Pass. go through this. When what, when I write the you have. Because when I write this, I mean it's one more of this guy yeah. plus one more of this guy become one more. That's how we can describe. We don't talk about one molecule. So that's by implicitly. So we all uh, this is molar ratio or molar stoichiometry. So to to translate our language with the fittest, we end up time the charge by the Avogadro constant. That turned out to be uh, uh, this is the uh, the unit charge, but the physics like to call coolant. You know, so to go from coolant to your that's the, the Faraday is the first guy to figure out the conversion. So we honor him by calling the Faraday constant. Now, so that means per mole of electron is Faraday constant amount of coolant. <laughs> how to say that? That's 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 how you end up converting them. Make sense? And oh, so that's per mole of electron charge. And, and this is how many more for that reaction occur. And that's the amount of charge go through this current with this reaction finish with one more of stoichiometry. Make sense? And obviously, we also try to honor physics notion that the electron is negative, so we'll put a negative on there. Okay, so, um, okay, so this means we, if we actually put this two together, and then that give us so that's pretty much what it is and of course I said earlier 
if I set up every concentration as a reference point, you can write the same phenomena. So you would have to say, you know, that is when you have everybody is on the standard state, you can equivalent have that. So with that, you could actually pretty much just So, what? What's their difference? Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, that, I see. Yeah, I, I hope, you know, sometimes you pay attention to what I write, because I, I could even lose a prime or non-prime sign. So, but uh, I think, I try to be consistent, I'm trying to, okay, so the point is, you could, uh, we'll go back, back up here, we can basically write, uh, for any electrochemical cell, uh, it, it has a so-called reference standpoint, and then it can be altered by a concentration through this relationship. That's basically, it's called Lerner's equation, so it's uh, basically the main point today, all the discussion, and it was something we set up from last lecture. Uh, this, uh, I want to summarize one more time. This equation, uh, as 